Hi Internet, Orc speaking, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to some more rebounds. Today we are going to be playing the Super Blooper. You know inside of all those games, there's always that one character, like in Mario Kart DS there was Rob, and in a lot of games like there's this weird goopy character that's normally green, and made out of like jelly, and he just doesn't have characteristics of any of the other, but at the same time he kind of has everything. That's this vehicle. This vehicle has... Ooh, hold up. Honky Kong bumping me around out here. Gotta avoid that. So this vehicle is a performance transmission cart with a low drift start distance, which means it doesn't tilt as much as you can see. When it drifts, it doesn't turn as sideways as a normal cart does, which makes it so the cart is facing forward more than you know most other carts. On top of that, it is also a off-road based vehicle. So you may notice, I actually should be, should be corner cutting some of these corners, just a little bit, maybe not a crazy amount, but just, I don't think I can go in between that, or maybe I can. Okay, I don't think this is faster. <laughs> the off-road is not that strong. Because it's a performance transmission and because it's an off-road based vehicle, it kind of doesn't do either, but it has both, if that makes sense. So I think this might- oh, this, not anymore. I thought maybe with the mini turbo going straight through there might be a good idea. Nope. And it also has mini turbo, I forgot to mention that. Now because it has all of these weird characteristics like mini turbo, performance transmission, speed, well not really speed, that's the one thing it lacks, but the low drift start distance, the grippy tires, the off-road capabilities. This is a vehicle that was designed not to do a specific thing, but rather to be developed by someone who will eventually come along and find out what this vehicle is good at. Because we intentionally made this vehicle not really good at anything, but very capable of doing a lot of things. So lines on this vehicle might be a little bit different. You have to weigh out on this track, it's not really a good example because there's hardly any off-road. So maybe like right here, it might be worth cutting in. And on this light patch of green grass as well. Let's try not to clob it. It doesn't handle that great, but its drift is pretty fun to use. I think one of the most important things that I was focusing on when I was making every vehicle was making sure that they all feel unique and fun to play. That was a very critical thing for me to do. And I think I really enjoyed the Super Blooper being a low drift start distance vehicle. It just feels really nice to handle and control. No, I don't I don't know too many vehicles. Like I need to have a list in front of me. The problem about working on a mod that you've been developing for like years, uh, you tend to forget a lot of things. And I also have a really bad memory. So, you know, there are times when I see a change or something that I did and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. That's so cool. It's kind of like, I get surprised by my own uh, mod, which is really awesome. So I do uh, forget a few things. I'm not sure how many vehicles are low drift start distance. I feel like a lot of bikes. Oh, the off-road, uh, what is that vehicle called? Not the off-roader, the warrior bike. The warrior bike is a low drift start distance vehicle as well. Also, the CPUs are really struggling on this track. I don't quite know why. It's probably the cars. CPUs, you can't tune their line to be super precise. I'm gonna be honest, between this race and that race, I completely forgot the train of thought. So <laughs> that's fun. Again, part of the issues that I have with developing the mod is bad memories. Oh yeah, I was talking about the, the CPU lines. Um, because of the way that the CPUs are programmed, CPUs can't actually have a too precise line. That was one of my biggest regrets. And if I was making the game from the ground up, this is something I definitely change, which is the CPU lines. So you could tighten the lines to some degree, but on certain wide patches of road like this, you have to make the, I guess the catch, the line, big, really like a really fat line, just in case if a CPU strays out of its intended point. Which sometimes happens when they get bumped around, when they you know, get hit by certain items, they get knocked off their straight path. And if the, the line is not fat enough or wide enough to catch all the CPUs, they tend to break and just move around in loops, which is not good, obviously. Yeah, CPUs, again, one of my biggest uh, hurdles with developing the rebalance mod, especially the CPU lines, was just how imprecise they were. I really wanted the CPUs to be able to do things like the DS Delfino Double. That That's a really mild one. Um, some more precise stuff like the Grumble Volcano Rock Hop. I would have loved to be able to program the CPUs to be able to do that. Rock Hop or even the Respawn or just like anything like that. The problem with the CPU lines is they're just not precise enough. And they can't. It's not that they're not precise enough, it's that they can't be precise enough. Oh, that mini turbo actually lasts for quite a while. That's crazy. This is a track where this off, uh, this, I keep saying off-roader. What is this called? The super blooper? 
Yeah, the Super Blooper is going to excel quite nicely on this track because it kind of has all the characteristics to make it good. Minus this one section right here. This section is a pain. I don't think I can make that without kind of slowing down. And because I have a performance transmission, it's very analog the way that the speed works like a real car. That's one way you could kind of think of the difference between a performance transmission and a bike, for instance. Like, a bike will lock speed back and forth. So you'll go to set 97A KMH if we're talking stock Mario Kart. And then you'll drop to 84 when you're drifting. And then you'll drop to 0 and you go back up to 84 and you go up to 97. It, it's a very incremental speed jumps. With a performance transmission, it's a lot more linear. There's a lot more in between. Actually, while we're on the topic of that, one interesting thing about performance transmissions is the way that they handle corners. Because they're constantly bleeding speed, like it, consistently throughout the corner. As you can see here, I'm losing speed. Actually, I'm gaining speed because I'm below my speed threshold, which is around, I think, 88 on this vehicle. That mini turbo was not good to grab. There's so many components to this vehicle. I remember telling Troy specifically, don't play the Super Blooper because it is, it's complicated in a lot of, in the sense that you have to be aware of a lot of individual components. So inside of like, ooh, let's give an example. Inside of like Melee, for instance, or Valorant, you tend to learn a character archetype individually. So you get really good at playing a duelist or a controller. In Melee, you get really good at playing Fox. If you're playing Falco, you get good at pillaring. Marth, you get good at tippering, chain comboing, moving in a specific style. You don't learn a bunch of different styles. You practice one and you get good at that and then you move on from there. This vehicle is kind of an amalgamation. So you have to be aware of a lot of different vehicle characteristics. You have to be aware of the mini, like how a mini turbo vehicle handles aware of how a performance transmission handles, aware of how an off-road vehicle handles, and then you gotta kind of string- I did the same mistake. <laughs> I made the exact same mistake. And you have to sh not only be good with each individual component, but you also have to be, you know, aware and like, I guess malleable enough to learn how to mesh all those three components or four components together. I actually really need that shroom. Performance transmissions don't do well. Their big Achilles heel is when they're small. Because most of the performance transmissions are tuned because they have such a high headroom. Their top speed is actually like the halfway... Okay, let me back up a bit because this, this might be a little bit confusing to understand. So you cannot start a drift unless you are about 55% way into your top speed. And when you have a performance transmission, there is some headroom ahead, which... In this case, is like 93. Most of the time, oh, I almost made the same mistake again. Because there's headroom, the speed that you are required to be at in order to start a drift is much higher than most other vehicles, which you don't have because you're playing with a smaller amount. There's extra buffer that's added, kind of like a battery. You know, there's extra headroom that you're not allowed to use unless you you come down from a mini turbo or some kind of boost. So it makes performance transmissions really, really, really bad at being small. And the reason why bikes don't have that issue is because bikes, when they go into that extra headroom, if you will, that extra space that you're not allowed to get to, unless, you know, you get a mini turbo or you just, I guess, accelerate for a bike's case, is because the wheelie is calculated as its own separate thing. It's its own separate form of speed. So a bike only has a top speed of like 86, which makes it so that the speed that you is required for you to start a mini turbo is much lower. I don't have to get killed here. All right. So yeah, that's how bikes get around it. And again, big Achilles heel for a performance transmission. But the payoff is that you could drive straight. So there's always a pro and a con. I'm gonna be honest, I did not actually really stop to think about, you know, the, the fact that a performance transmission sucks for being small or flattened or squashed or, you know, some other hazardous effect. But it really, if you stop and think about it, it makes sense. And that's one thing that this vehicle is... Oh, God. <laughs> that actually made me jump. That's one thing about this vehicle that kind of is its own design philosophy. This vehicle is supposed to be that. It's supposed to make it so you're constantly learning and trying out new things. Because it has a lot of tools. It has a lot of components. Again, it's an amalgamation of a bunch of different character archetypes or vehicle archetypes. And... This, oh, that's a story, right? We just don't know. We just don't know what this game has to offer when you have these individual components. It's kind of like if you have a mathematic formula, 
It's like, oh, you know the answer if you have, if the starting answer is one, right? But what happens if the starting, the initial component, the first component is five or eight? Like, how does that change the formula? How does that change the answer? And I know I personally have to speak from the heart for this one. I hate math, but I really love developing and studying metas of games and finding out what's good and bad. Be sure to grab your copy of Mario Kart Balance Diversion 5 today. Be sure to join the Discord server for technical supports and how to install and have fun. Mario Kart Rebalanced version 5 available now.